for the pictures always give us a hint or a foreshadowing of the next chapter. So this is the picture. This starts chapter 21. It says, Neil's Diner. The diner was called Neil's. The word was written in big red neon letters that flashed on and off. Inside it was warm and bright and smelled like fried chicken and toast and coffee. And Bryce sat at the counter and put Edward on a stool next to him and he leaned the rabbit's forehead up against the counter so he would not fall. What are you going to have, sugar? The waitress said to Bryce. Give me some pancakes, said Bryce, and some eggs and I want steak too. And I want a big old steak and some toast and some coffee. The waitress leaned forward and pulled at one of Edward's ears and then pushed him backwards so she could see his face. This your rabbit? She said to Bryce. Yes, and he's mine now. He belonged to my sister. Bryce wiped at his nose with the back of his hand. We're in show business, me and him. Is that right, said the waitress. She had a name tag on the front of her dress, Marlene, it said. She looked at Edward's face and then she let go of his ear and he fell forward so that his head rested against the counter again. Go ahead, Marlene thought Edward. Push me around. Do with me as you will. What does it matter? I am broken. Broken. The food came, and Bryce ate all of it without even looking up from his plate. Well, you was hungry for sure, said Marlene as she cleared away the plates. I reckon show business is hard work. Yes, sir, said Bryce. Marlene tucked the check under the coffee cup. So you know that when you eat at a restaurant, then you get a check, and that check you have to pay whatever amount that is. And remember, Bryce had made some money when he was entertaining on the streets, trying to um, bring in some money for himself to eat. Poor Bryce hasn't had a very happy life, has he? Bryce picked up the bill and looked at it, and then he shook his head. I ain't got enough, he said to Edward. Ma'am, he said to Marlene when she came back and filled up his coffee cup, I, I ain't got enough. What sugar? I ain't got enough money. She stopped pouring the coffee and looked at him. You're going to have to talk to Neil about that. Neil, it turned out, was both the owner and the cook. He was a large, red-haired, red-faced man who came out of the kitchen holding a spatula in one hand. First of all, if you were Neil, or if you were a person in the restaurant, and you saw a little boy by himself who was obviously so hungry that he ate all that food, could you, would you offer to pay for him? Or even if they didn't offer to pay for him, I've heard of some restaurants in the past where, let's say you couldn't pay your bill. So then they had you work there. They had you wash dishes. They had to do something. Let's see if Neil is that kind. This is what Neil said. You came in here hungry, right? He said to Bryce. Yes, sir, said Bryce. He wiped his nose with the back of his hand. And you ordered some food. And I cooked it and Marlene brought it to you, right? I reckon, said Bryce. You reckon, said Neil. He brought the spatula down on the countertop with a thwack. And Bryce jumped. Yes, sir. I, I mean, no, sir. I cooked it for you, said Neil. Yes, sir, said Bryce. He picked Edward up off the stool and held him close. Everyone in the diner had stopped eating. They were all staring at the boy and the rabbit and Neil, and only Marlene looked away. You ordered it. I cooked it. Marlene served it. You ate it. Now, said Neil, I want my money. And he tapped the spatula lightly on the counter. And Bryce cleared his throat. And he said, you ever seen a rabbit dance? How's that, said Neil. Do you ever before in your life seen a rabbit dance? Bryce set Edward on the floor and started pulling the strings attached to his feet, making him do a slow shuffle. He put his harmonica in his mouth and played a sad song that went along with the dance. And somebody laughed. And Bryce took the harmonica out of his mouth and said, he could dance some more for you if you want him to. He could dance to pay for what I ate. Neil stared at Bryce. And then without warning, he reached down and he grabbed hold of Edward. This is what I think of dancing rabbits, said Neil. And he swung Edward by the feet, swung him so that his head hit the edge of the counter hard. And there was a loud crack. And Bryce screamed. And the world... Edward's world went black. Remember what he's made of. It's a china doll. China can break. So this is an interesting picture to start this next chapter. Who's walking into that house? 
It appears to be a rabbit, doesn't it? It was dusk and Edward was walking down a sidewalk. He was walking on his own, putting one foot in front of the other without any assistance from anybody. He was wearing a fine suit made of red silk. He walked down the sidewalk and then he turned onto the path that led up the house to the lighted windows. I know this house, thought Edward. This is Abilene's house. I'm on Egypt Street. And Lucy came running out the front door of the house, barking and jumping and wagging her tail. Down, girl, said a deep, rough voice. And Edward looked, and there was Bull standing at the door. Hello, Malone, said Bull. Hello, good old rabbit pie. We've been waiting for you. And Bull swung the door wide, and Edward walked inside. And Abilene was there, and Nellie, and Lawrence, and Bryce. Susanna, called Nellie. Jangles, said Bryce. Edward, said Abilene. She held out her arms to him, but Edward stood still. He looked around in the room. Are you searching for Sarah Ruth? Bryce asked. Edward nodded. You got to go outside if you want to see Sarah Ruth, said Bryce. So they all went outside, Lucy and Bull and Nellie and Lawrence and Bryce and Abilene and Edward. Right there, said Bryce. He pointed up at the stars. Yep, said Lawrence. That is the Sarah Ruth constellation. He picked Edward up and put him on his shoulder. You can see it right there. And now Edward felt a pang of sorrow, deep and sweet and familiar. Why did she have to be so far away? If only I had wings, he thought I could fly to her. And out of the corner of his eye, the rabbit saw something flutter. And Edward looked over his shoulder, and there they were, the most magnificent wings he had ever seen, orange and red and blue and yellow. And they were on his back, and they belonged to him, and they were his wings. Ah, oh, what a wonderful night this was. He was walking on his own, he had an elegant new suit, and now he had wings? He could fly anywhere, do anything. Why had he never realized it before? His heart soared inside of him. He spread his wings and flew off Lawrence's shoulders out of his, hand, out of his hands and up into the nighttime sky toward the stars, toward Sarah Ruth. No, shouted Abilene. Catch him, said Bryce. And Edward flew higher and Lucy barked. Malone, shouted Bull, and with a terrific lunge, he grabbed hold of Edward's feet and pulled him out of the sky and wrestled him to the earth. You can't go yet, said Bull. Stay with us, said Abilene. And Edward beat his wings, but it was no use, and Bull held him firmly to the ground. Stay with us, repeated Abilene. And Edward started to cry. I couldn't stand to lose you again, said Nellie. Neither could I, said Abilene. It would break my heart. And Lucy bent her face to Edward's, and she licked his tears away. Interesting chapter, isn't it? I don't know if you've ever heard this said, but some people feel like when we die, that we will get to see all the people we loved who have gone before us. And certainly in this book, all the people that Edward has loved were in this chapter, weren't they? They were all there. Even, even He even knew how to get to Sarah Ruth. Sarah Ruth was a constellation, but she was there. So interesting chapter. Here's the beginning of the next chapter. Hmm. Looks like someone's working on the China Rabbit. Exceedingly well made, said the man who was running a warm cloth over Edward's face. A work of art, I would say, a surpassingly, unbelievably dirty work of art, but an art nonetheless. And dirt can be dealt with, just as your broken head will be, will be dealt with. Edward looked into the eyes of the man. Ah, there you are, said the man. I can see you're listening now. Your head was broken. I fixed it. I brought you back from the world of the dead. My heart, thought Edward. My heart is broken. No, no, no need to thank me, the man said. It's my job, quite literally. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Lucius Clark, Dal Mender. Your head, may I tell you? Will it upset you? Well, I always say the truth must be met head on. No, pun intended. Your head, young sir, was in 21 pieces. 21 pieces, Edward repeated mindlessly. Lucius Clark nodded. 21, he said. All modesty aside, I must admit that a lesser dalmender, a dalmender without my skills, might not have been able to rescue you, but let's not speak of what might have been. Let us speak instead of what is. You are whole. You have been pulled back from the brink of oblivion by your humble servant, Lucius Clark. And here Lucius Clark put his hand on his chest and bowed deeply to Edward. That was quite a speech to wake up to. And Edward lay on his back trying to absorb it. He was on a wooden table. He was in a room with sunshine pouring in from high windows. 
His head apparently had been in 21 pieces when Mel had bashed him against the counter, and now he was put back together into one. He was not wearing a red suit like his dream. In fact, he had no clothes on at all. He was naked again, and he did not have wings. And then he remembered Bryce, the diner, Neil swinging him through the air. Bryce. You're wondering perhaps about your young friend, said Lucius, the one with the continually runny nose. Yeah, he brought you here weeping, begging for my assistance. Put him together again, I, he said. Put him back together. And I told him, I, I said, young sir, I am a businessman. I can put your rabbit back together again for a price. The question is, can you pay this price? And he could not. Of course he could not. He said he could not. So I told him he had two options, only two. The first option being that he seek assistance elsewhere. Option two was that I would fix you to the very best of my considerable abilities, and then you would become mine, his no longer, but mine. Here Lucius fell silent. He nodded, agreeing with himself. Two options only, he said, and your friend chose option two. He gave you up so that you could be healed. Extraordinary, really. So that's a sacrifice, right? That was one of our spelling words from last week. That is a sacrifice that Bryce gave Edward up so he could be repaired, but he no longer gets to have him. Bryce, thought Edward. Lucius Clark clapped his hands together. But no worries, my friend, no worries. I fully intend to keep up my end of the bargain. I will restore you to what I perceive to be your former glory. You shall have rabbit fur ears and a rabbit fur tail. Your whiskers will be repaired and replaced. Your eyes repainted to a bright and stunning blue. You will be clothed in the finest of suits. And then someday I will reap the return on my investment in you. All in good time, all in good time. In the doll business we have a saying, there is real time and there is doll time. And you, my fine friend, have entered doll time. <laughs>